you know, it, I shouldn't laugh, but when I hear about people when they talk about pips and they want to trade currencies, no, no, just don't do it. All right, let me tell you a little bit about the truth. 90% of clients, retail clients, don't make money, all right? You would be better off working at McDonald's, and at the moment you can get 5.73 an hour working at McDonald's, than you will trade in currencies. They over leverage, you know, because what you want you to do, you want to get the client to go broke as quickly as possible. Now, the average FX client lasts about six months, and that's being generous. You just want them to trade as much as possible and just get out of the way, give them the money, sorry, come back, you know, and lose it. They're trading or investing, they're not, they're basically gambling, it's become fashionable. They're trying to short-term trade pips. If anyone says pips to me, I just know that they're not making money because no professional ever talks in pips. We normally say, you know, percentage of our account of how much profit we've made, uh, basis points. But pips is just something that, you know, the little guy talks about. Short-term, FX is far more random than you think, you know. A lot can happen in hours and a day and what have you. Now... If you think day trading works, as I say, I've seen hundreds of systems and these robots which pretty much are random generator numbers. Um, now, you will get winning trades, but you'll toss a coin and you'll get winning trades. But over time, you're not going to make money. Now, how do I make money in FX? Now, I have a lot of money invested in the FX market. The first way I make money out of FX is a byproduct. So if I buy Nestle shares and I'm in Swiss francs, I've got my FX through that way. Last year, and someone was talking here about buying uh, corporate bonds. I bought into corporate bonds, but I bought Canadian corporate bonds. How did I do it? I did it with a Canadian ETF. So I needed Canadian dollars to obviously buy the ETF. So I made money in the um, corporate bonds, and I also made money from the exchange as well. I use ETFs, surprise, surprise. Um, rather than just using FX accounts, but I do trade FX. I do not spread bet any currencies unless I'm desperate and I'm already up to my limit somewhere else, which just doesn't happen, or some system's gone down. I only use one uh, bank, and that's Deutsche Bank. And I don't get paid a penny from Deutsche Bank to, um, to promote them, but they are my prime foreign exchange um, company. I've also got an FX with Swiss Quote and a few others, but my main positions are with Deutsche Bank. Why? Because um, they're very stable and they're, they're very, very good. I don't use any charts. I don't use any of their research. I just use the platform and... Uh Talk about currencies, especially the U.S. dollar. The U.S. dollar has been and is still the world's reserve currency. It's the world's medium of exchange. As you all know, as recently as 1987, the United States was a creditor nation. Now the United States is the largest debtor nation in the world. But not only is the United States the largest debtor in the world right now, the United States is the largest debtor nation in the history of the world. There has never been a country which has gotten itself so deeply in debt. And this has happened in just, what, 20, 23 years. It's gone from being a creditor nation to the largest debtor nation in the history of the world. So you can see the kind of profound change which is taking place. Some of you will have read about or might even remember when the pound sterling was the world's reserve currency and the world's medium of exchange. That changed. And as you know, many people lost fortunes because they were not aware of what was going on. Other people made fortunes because they could see the historic change which was taking place and understood the significance. You need to understand this now. We're in another, hist another period of historic change and the U.S. dollar is going to be a greatly debased and devalued currency over the next few years and decades. Now, in America, or in Washington especially, it is the official policy of the central bank to debase the currency. The head of the central bank in America, his name is Bernanke, he was a professor. Mr. Bernanke does not know anything about economics. He knows nothing about markets. He knows nothing about currencies. He knows nothing about much of anything except printing money. Mr. Bernanke has spent his whole intellectual career, Dr. Bernanke, I guess I should call him, Dr. Bernanke has spent his whole intellectual career studying the printing of money. Well, America has given him the printing presses now, 
and he has been running those printing presses at a rapid rate. But you just wait until things get really bad. When things get really bad, he's going to print those, he's going to run those printing presses until we run out of trees. Because Mr. Bernanke doesn't know anything else. He thinks it's good to debase the currency. He thinks it's good to, he thinks it's good to drive down the value of the money. And he's going to continue to do so. Now, this is a terrible policy. Many countries throughout history have tried to revive their economies or become more competitive by debasing the currency. You know, the French used to do it all the time. The Italians, you did it. The English did it at times. But it has never worked in the long term. It has never worked in the medium term. Sometimes it works in the short term. But in the long term, it's always been a disaster. And it's going to be a disaster for the United States as well. So you've got to understand about this historic shift which is taking place. I happen to own the United States dollar at the moment, but let me explain why. Even though I'm very extremely pessimistic over the long term, I own it now because last fall there were many, many, many people pessimistic about the dollar. There were huge numbers of bears. The world was short the U.S. dollar. And so I said to myself... My God, everybody's pessimistic about the dollar, including me. Now, I've been investing for a long time, and I have learned that when everybody's on one side of a trade, or when everybody's on one side of a boat, it's time to move over to the other side of the boat for a while. So I actually started accumulating dollars. I own more dollars now than I've owned probably in many years. Uh, I don't expect this to be a long-term holding of mine. Uh, whether I sell this quarter, this year, or next year, who knows? I have no clue. I'm not nearly as good as market timing as, as some other people. You can, Vince seems to know more about market timing than I do. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to sell my U.S. dollar somewhere along the line uh, because the dollar is a terribly flawed currency, and it's going to weigh that sterling went. Sterling went down over, 90, over 80 or 90 percent from top to bottom when that change took place. The same will happen with the U.S. dollar. Now, you know I should say for many of you who wanted to start in currencies, and if I had to say you want to start in currencies today, I would just trade currency ETFs, all right, and the dollar index, which is a basket of currencies against the dollar. If you think the dollar is going to strengthen, you buy it. If you think the dollar is going to weaken, you short it. Simple as that. One trade. And I'll show you in a second why. I also trade minor currencies and crosses, um, and sometimes I have to do that by you know, putting money in a bank account. Okay, this is just going back. This is <coughs> the Swiss franc against the pound. Mm, what's the trend on that? So the Nestle shares that I bought in 2000... And many of you know I've been bullish on Nestle for ages. Um, it's the stock that I've never sold, was Nestle. I've only ever bought it. But I've also made good money out of the foreign exchange. And it's a byproduct. It's funny because I never really thought that much about the foreign exchange at that time. But it's done really, really well from there. So this is, this is why I like it. One share minimum, right? So nobody can't say they can't trade it. The management cost half a percent a year. It's transparent.